Okay class, so this video is about hybrid orbitals and then the bonding picture that um, we were talking about in class today. And I feel like the hybrid orbitals part, it's a it's a difficult concept and then the, the bonding picture, it's a, you know, it's really taking the the con concepts we've been talking about to, to the next level and really, um, you know, really getting into what do the actual molecules look like and how are they actually constructed. So it can be a little confusing. So I wanted to make this video to, to help us out, give us a little bit more um, practice in some of this stuff. So when we're looking at these types of problems, the first thing we're always going to want to do is to draw the proper Lewis structure and determine hybridization. This, you know, the reason we talked about Lewis structures last week is because we need to, to do the Lewis structure, to draw the Lewis structure first and, and have a good handle of that. If you don't have the proper Lewis structure, then you can't do any of the rest of the stuff. So it's simple as that. That is the, the building block that we need to have in order to, to talk about hybrid orbitals and bonding and you know all the rest of this sort of stuff, polarity. So um, let's go ahead and get started with drawing these Lewis structures. So my examples here for BH3, trigonal planar uh, geometry, I can you know draw this Lewis structure. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, now in terms of determining the hybridization, so around that boron, what we want to sort of think about is, one, what is the molecular geometry? I already said it's trigonal planar, and if it's trigonal planar, then that means that we're going to have sp2 hybridization. So this boron has sp2 hybridization. Um, and, you know, the whole idea of molecular geometry and hybridization and bond angles, those are all related, right? So if we look at this and we say, well, this is 120 degrees, it's trigonal planar, it's sp2, that's all really saying the same exact thing. They're all really related. Um, trigonal planar molecules will always have sp2 hybridization. If I've got you know 120 bond, uh, uh, degree bond angles, again, that will always indicate sp2 hybridization. Those things all go hand in hand. Let's do the next one, NH3. So my Lewis structure here for NH3, and again, I've drawn it in the proper, using the proper stereochemistry, using wedge dash notation. So I've got a trigonal, bi, uh, excuse me, a trigonal pyramidal um, molecular geometry. The hybridization on this nitrogen is going to be sp3 hybridized. So the way that I'm getting to that is I'm thinking about this lone pair as sort of another group of electrons. So I've got one, two, three, four electron groupings. So each bond or lone pair, I consider that to be a grouping. Those groupings will want to get as far away from each other as possible. That's their, their sort of goal. And so this is going to have a tetrahedral arrangement of the electron groups. And then the molecular geometry is going to be trigonal pyramidal. So trigonal pyramidal molecular geometry. And then the arrangement of all of these different groups is going to be tetrahedral. So we need to, to you know, have a differentiation between electron geometry and then the molecular geometry. But this hybridization here on that nitrogen is going to be sp3. And that sp3 is, again, based off of the tetrahedral arrangement, based off of the bond angles here. So if I want to look at this angle h to h, um, that's going to be about 109.5 degrees. There'll be a little bit of an effect because of that lone pair, but for our purposes for now, we're just going to say that that's about 109.5 degrees. That's going to be sp3 hybridized. Do the same thing for water. So my water molecule is going to have a bent molecular geometry, so it's just simply a bent shape. Um, and now I've got two lone pairs. And again, those two lone pairs, those are going to count as electron groupings. So if I want to look at this oxygen atom in the center, it will again have an sp3 hybridization. So this is really the first step uh, of doing this whole, you know, hybrid orbitals and bonding picture discussion. We need to be able to draw our Lewis structures, and then we need to be able to determine the hybridization for whatever atom we're talking about. And again, that hybridization is simply going to be due to the molecular geometry, the shape that we have. Um, we've looked at this table before. So again, this table is just going to outline for sp hybridization, sp2 hybridization, and sp3 hybridization the different shapes that we're going to be looking for. So if I've got this uh, trigonal planar arrangement of my different you know, atoms, that's going to be sp2 hybridized. An example here is BF3. Linear, we didn't talk about that one on the previous example here, but linear is going to be if it's in a straight line. BeCl2 is our example of that. 
and that's SP hybridized. Uh, SP3 hybridized, this is the one we're probably gonna interact with the most, and we've got examples of CH4 and NH4+. I've got a tetrahedral arrangement, 109.5 degrees, uh, arranged around that central atom. Um, now, how do we make these? That's sort of the, the question I think that, that we struggle with the most. And the way that we make them, the way that we sort of think about this, is that we're gonna take the S orbital and the P orbital, and we're gonna mush it up. We're gonna mush up what we have there, and we're gonna get these two new orbitals out. So we put two orbitals in, and we get two orbitals out. So this is the hybridization process. And the reason we're really doing this is because we need to get the right bond angles. If we just think about our normal atomic orbitals, our normal atomic orbitals have 90 degree angles, always 90 degree angles, but I'm seeing 120 degrees here, 109.5 degrees here, so we need to sort of make that fit, essentially. So here is my picture for my hybridization of my sp2 system, so I'm taking the s orbital, and then two of the p orbitals, so this is sp2, right, S. P2, and the reason it's called sp2 is because I've got the one s orbital, or excuse me, well it's the two s orbital, but one of the s orbitals, and then two of the p orbitals combining together, together to form this sp2 hybridized system. Same thing for my sp3 system, I'm just going to have a combination of all three of the p orbitals and one of the s orbitals to form four new orbitals. So another way to look at this would be to see this sort of tetrahedral arrangement each of these blue lobes, right, that is gonna be my um, hybrid, hybridized orbital. So this would be my sp3 hybridized system where I've taken my three p orbitals and my one s orbital um, and combined them to form four new orbitals. Four orbitals in, four orbitals out. Okay, so let's clear that away and then talk about the bonding picture based on electron configuration and hybridization. So the most common way we're gonna talk about this is gonna be with something like ethylene. So here's ethylene gas. Um, and we're gonna talk about C1 and C2. So we'll talk about C1 first. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is determine the hybridization. That C1 is gonna be sp2 hybridized. The way I'm thinking about that, I've got a trigonal planar geometry around that C1. I've got three groups around it, um, 120 degree bond angles, all of that sort of stuff is gonna be telling me that this C1 is sp2 hybridized. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna consider the electron configuration. So for C1, the ground state electron configuration, so this is going back to our discussions of electron configurations and you know ground state versus excited state and all that sort of stuff. But this is my ground state electron configuration for C1. And what we're saying when we do this hybridization is we're saying we're gonna take some of these orbitals and we're gonna hybridize them. And in this case, we're gonna hybridize that 2s orbital and two hybridize um, two of the 2p orbitals. And what we're gonna end up with, so the 1s orbital we're just gonna leave alone, and we're gonna form three new sp2 orbitals, and then we're gonna have this 2p orbital left over. So this 2p orbital will just come across here. It's left over, it's not part of the hybridization process. I'm choosing this, right, because we're doing an sp2 hybridization, hybridization. I'm choosing two of the p orbitals and one of the s orbitals um, because I've got this molecular geometry that I see up here. So this sort of all is, is a progression, starting with my molecular geometry, my Lewis structure. I know that, the, know that that's sp2 hybridized. This is my ground state electron configuration. So really I'm not paying attention to where the electrons are at this point in time. I know it's sp2 hybridized. So I'm gonna take this, you know, two p orbitals and one s orbital and hybridize those in an sp2 fashion. These three orbitals are gonna turn into three new sp2 orbitals. These are my hybrid orbitals. And then I'm gonna have a leftover two p orbital. I can fill in the electrons now. So I've got six electrons, so this 1s is just the ground state, it's not really gonna do anything. And now I need to use this picture to describe the bonding over here. So the way that I like to sh sort of show this, so here are my sp2 hybridized orbitals on C1. I've got, you know, 120 degree bond angles here. Um, you know, I've got something that looks sort of like this, right? I've got my, my angles here. So in my picture that I've drawn, 
this orbital is coming out of the page towards us. This one's going into the page um, away from us. And there's going to be one electron. So write in some electrons. One electron in each one of those lobes. That's what we see here, right? And then off of these, that's where my bonds are going to form between hydrogen and then C2. So C2 is going to be over here. Let's draw this one a little bit bigger. And I've got my electron there as well. So C2 and this electron here from C1, they're going to sort of combine to form a bond. And so we might say that this electron here, this electron here is from C2. And then now I've got two electrons. And this is my CC. And this is actually called a sigma bond. So a new terminology there, but that's called a sigma bond. And these two electrons in this sp2 orbital, that's going to be what is forming that C1-C2 bond. Now over here in my other sp2 orbitals, I've got, again, a sharing of electrons. So these two little dashed lines, that would be an electron from hydrogen and another electron from hydrogen. So I know my picture is getting a little bit messy, but here we've got two electrons, here we've got two electrons, and each one of these is represented by these two dashes here. So this would be my CH bonds, where one of the electrons, the electron, the, the you know filled in electron that is coming from carbon, and then the dashed electrons, those are each one each coming from hydrogen. So now I've got this leftover 2p, and what's gonna happen with this is what we call a pi bond. So then above and below the plane, so this is actually in the plane of the, the paper as we're drawing it here. I'm going to have a leftover p orbital. So this is my leftover p orbital. And that leftover p orbital, there's going to be an electron there. So we'll put an electron in there. And it's going to overlap. So it doesn't really look like it can overlap. But trust me, it can. We're going to overlap with this other p orbital on C2. And that's going to be what we call a pi bond. So that other electron. So we'll put another electron up here. That's from C2. And we call this our CC pi bond. Okay, so let's look at some other pictures that might help sort of with this, you know, awful drawing that I've made. So here we've got our sp2 hybridized carbons, so C1 and C2. I see my 120 degree bond angles, and this would be that CC sigma bond that we're seeing here, right? So one electron from each of those carbons would be shared in this space, giving our, our one bond. What this picture is showing us is that overlapping of my p orbitals that I was trying to show here. So the overlapping of the leftover p orbitals, one electron from each one of those, and we're gonna have sort of that, that you know, electron density between the two carbons, giving us our, our double bond essentially. So here, this is another picture. I've got my carbon, I've got my CH bond here, CH bond here, CC bond in purple, and then the pi bond, that second you know, from the 2p, that's gonna be above and below the plane, essentially, um, of this CC bond. So that's just one other picture. And then the last picture that I'm gonna show you looks like this. So in this picture, I've got this plane of CH, CH2, right? And then the pi bond above and below, and this is showing the electron density where I've got a lot of electron density above and below where that CC bond is. So hopefully this, this helps you um, sort of visualize this a little bit better. Um, the next video I'm going to be making is for formaldehyde. So what I would really recommend you do before you watch the other video is think about this molecule here. This is called formaldehyde. And think about the bonding between this carbon and the hydrogens and oxygens, and then also this oxygen. What's going on with that oxygen? Because we've got a lone pair of electrons. How might we deal with that? So in the next video, I will talk about this formaldehyde molecule.